hello hello and welcome back to another video with the feed my sheep foundation video channel today we're continuing our bible study in the book of Jose, and we are on chapter 12 for this video and uh, going forward again taking a look at uh, the children of israel and their rebellion and how god initially goes forward to first and foremost send jeremiah the prophet to them or other prophets prior to jeremiah because there were other prophets and Jose was one of those among the many that God sent into their their presence into the presence of the children of Israel to forewarn them that God was getting ready to release his judgment from the heavens upon them because of their disobedience and their <clears throat> rebellion uh, toward him and, uh, and the fact that they had begun to worship other gods and uh, prefer those other gods over him after he had, had made himself well known unto them, made his presence well known unto them, and made his power well known unto them, and what he would do for them, and how hard he would fight for them, you know, uh, but they still, for some reason, uh, was not able to keep the faith in God, so therefore, uh, as they began to go forward and to worship those idols, God began to send his spirit into the midst of them to forewarn them. And so uh, Jose, again, is another one of those prophets uh, from the uh, prophetic ministry series that we're taking a look at, at and see how God uses those individuals that are a part of the kingdom of heaven in that particular manner. OK, and uh, chapter 12, I'm going to go ahead and continue on with our Bible study in this book. Uh, and then we have two more chapters to complete after this chapter and uh, just continuing again uh, looking at what God was saying in reference to the children of Israel at that moment in time when they were in Jerusalem and they were at the center of attention uh, just like in the earth today the saints of God in the kingdom are the center of God's attention because it's his presence in the earth he speaks through he moves through he and he releases all whatever needs to be released whenever he wants to speak and go forward so uh, he uses the presence of the saints because it's him, okay? So here it says, Ephraim feeds on wind and follows after the east wind. He daily increases lies and desolation, and they do make a covenant with the Assyrians, and oil is carried into Egypt, okay? So again, we know Ephraim, uh, tribe of Ephraim, uh, refers to uh, the tribe of Joseph, uh, Ephraim and uh, Manasseh were the sons of Joseph, uh, Joseph tribe. Uh, also, we know uh, Jacob's is Israel's son, okay? And, um, but they were, were also a tribe within themselves, and they had begun to rebel against God, okay? So he begins to address them, too, specifically in his going forward with his wrath. And so he uh, then says that they have uh, made a covenant. So they have come into agreement with the Assyrians, okay? And uh, God says, and the oil is carried into Egypt at that moment in time because he's, you know, again, as the saints are in the earth today, they are the oil of his presence, the oil of his joy, the oil of his deliverance, the oil of his salvation, the oil of his hymn, of the holy heavens in the earth, okay? So therefore, as Ephraim went over into Assyria to go into covenant, into agreement with the Assyrian, not into agreement with the God of heaven from which that God called them to be in agreement with him and to not worship other idols, because again, the Assyrians worshiped idols. And so that's what led them over into captivity. Okay. So and then verse two, he says, the Lord has also a controversy with Judah and he will punish Jacob. According to his ways, according to his doings, will he recompense him? And he took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. Okay? So here he speaks of uh, that moment in time uh, when uh, Isaac and uh, Rebekah were told that they were going to give birth to two nations in the womb. And those two nations we know uh, would be... Uh, Jacob and Israel and then uh, Esau, the Edomites, uh, those were the two nations that were in the wombs together, struggling against one another. And he says uh, in verse four, he says, yet he, yes, he had power over the angel in 
and he prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spoke with us. For even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. Okay, and that's a speaking of Jacob, because again, he did struggle with uh, Esau in the womb, uh, but he was able to uh, take over. Okay, he was, you know, we know the story, and we can go back into it, uh, back in Genesis. Let's take a look over into it. Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25, and then it begins with verse 23. The Lord said unto her, unto uh, uh, his, uh, Jake, uh, Rebecca, and he said unto Rebecca, There are two nations in your womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from the bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the oldest shall serve the younger. Okay. Well, we see that going forth today, okay, in the earth. That's a prophecy God had given to go forward, and that is the, uh, what is the prophecy we're walking in today, okay? He says, and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, which are the two nations God spoke of. And then he said, the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Well, that's the first nation, okay? He's telling, and he says that, uh, that particular nation, which is Esau, shall serve the younger nation, which was Jacob. Okay, and then he tells us that, what did he say about the two uh, nations? And uh, uh, let's see, we'll go back up into where he tells us that they are separated. Number one, one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. Okay, so we know that Jacob and the tribe of Israel, where Jesus Christ originates from that particular tribe would definitely be the tribe that he's referring to because Christ Jesus, who is the Lord of Lord, King of Kings, the glory of salvation in the earth, okay, released from the heavens. So he tells us that here in this, whatever he does explain uh, to Rebecca and Isaac that they're going to give birth to two nations, okay, and what type of nations they're going to be giving birth to. And so then going back over into uh, Jose, into chapter uh, 12, where we're continuing on. He says, in verse 5, even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. Therefore, turn thou to, the God, to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on thy God continually, okay? For he is a merchant. The balances of deceit are in his hands, and he loves to oppress, Okay? And Ephraim said, Yet I am become rich, for I found me out substance. In all my labors they shall find none iniquity in, in me that were sin. Okay, now that's the haughtiness of how Ephraim had become. Okay, and again, it starts with verse 7 as God begins to speak of him. He says, He is a merchant. The balances of deceit are in his hands, very deceitful, and he's oppressing. Okay. So, um, and again, Ephraim, and then he goes on to say what he said within himself because he's, be, he's become rich, he feels, as though and he's found uh, substance. And uh, in all my labors, they shall find none iniquity in me that were sin. And I that am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt will yet make you to dwell in tabernacles as in the days of the solemn feasts, okay? So that's in God saying how he's going to bring him back down. Because again, Ephraim had began to rise up above uh, the children of Israel. He, they had also, uh, at one point in time, led them over into bondage, into Egypt, okay? And um, in this particular moment that we're speaking of, sort of uh, collaborates with that moment in time when they did do that. Okay, he says, and I that am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt will yet make you to dwell in tabernacles as in the days of the solemn feast. For I've also spoken by the prophets and I have multi multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Okay, again, because, you know, Jose was one that he was, that was sent into the mix of the children of Israel and Ephraim of course, being in the mix in Jerusalem at that moment in time. Prior to them even uh, looking for a way of escape 
and that way of escape uh, again that Ephraim came up with the idea that they should go back over into Egypt back over into bondage where God had originally delivered them from um, because again they had begun to worship idols and so they were not thinking clearly and that's what the worship of idol uh, idolatry will do it will take an individual from out of the will of God and thinking in the will of God to thinking out of the will of God into uh, because they're serving another God that individual would be serving another God, okay, within themselves, okay, with from within them spit within their spirit, and as the spirit leads, the mind will follow, okay. So, um, going on, verse uh, eleven, he says, "Is there iniquity in Gilead? Surely they are vanity. They sacrifice bullocks in Gilgal, and yes, their altars are as heaps in the furrows of the fields." And Jacob fled into the country of Syria, and Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. For Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly. Therefore shall he leave his blood upon him, and his reproach shall his Lord return unto him. Now that is, uh, and going forward, with how God goes forward with his judgment upon Ephraim and the reason pertaining to it, okay? Because again, what does he say? Yeah, he broke, he provoked him to anger most bitterly. Okay, so that is kind of like the conclusion of our chapter 12 for the book of Hosea because these chapters in his book are pretty small <laughs> and this was another small one. But that is the conclusion of it. God bless you. God be with you. And I will see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward looking at the prophetic ministry, looking at those prophets God used in the earth prophetically in the ministry, uh, just as he does today, whether he does send an individual uh, where they are uh, consciously aware of the fact that God is using them in that format, or maybe he just may release them and just move them in the operation of the prophetic ministry spirit okay to go forward uh, with his judgment in the earth all right god bless you god be with you i'll see you on our next bible study